Switching gears now uh, quite completely, a traumatic experience from somebody who is a member of the Morning News family who we love very much. The NCIS star Polly Perrette, of course, plays Abby on the series, is on the phone with us this morning. And I think more than anything, Polly, we're so glad you're here. What happened last night? Oh, hey, Sam. Hey, guys. Hi, Polly. Um, Hi, yeah, it was a really bad night. And, and you know, I just wanted to, like, I know you guys reached out to me because we're friends, but, um, you know, I, I just wanted to, I'm okay, first of all, but I had a really, uh, I got randomly, not from anything to do with my job or anything else, I got randomly attacked, um, assaulted by, a, like, a, a, a homeless guy that was completely out of his mind, and that only, like, punched me in the face and told me he was going to kill me, and I believed him completely. Uh, I, I cut out of it. I am safe now. But um, it was, uh, you know, I work, I'm an advocate for the homeless. I'm an advocate for homeless rights. It was a really uh, devastating irony for me that that happened tonight. And it just make it, it is compelling me further I'm glad to be alive because I was very unsure that that would be my fate when it was happening. But I still am. Uh, we need more help for um, the mentally ill in our homeless community, and we need help. And I maybe that's why this happened tonight because I literally got attacked and pinned and punched and almost killed by a. Get the front of homeless person tonight. You you sent out a, a message overnight that literally has has ricocheted around the world, and I'll read a part of it. Um, I was very hesitant about tweeting this. Tonight was an awful night, and then you describe uh, what took place. I was walking across my street to a new guest house I brought to meet my architect. On my street, I was jumped by a very psychotic homeless man. He grabbed yes. me so forcefully, pinned my arm, punched me in the nose. Uh, forehead repeatedly telling me he was going to kill me. Paulie, in that moment, I, I, I can't imagine, I don't know if it feels like a blur or if it feels like it's not happening or if it feels like it's all too happening. I, I feel like I am a part of a club that I, you know, unfortunately, am a part of a club that I, I don't want to be in, but I did gain a new understanding of, you know, I'm a criminal science major and I work on a crime show, but the feeling in that moment where you're just a pedestrian, you know, happy walking around somewhere and you get snatched off the street. Um, I have watched a million cases. I've played them on television. We have talked about it. I watched the news. I'm a, you guys know I'm a news junkie. Um, for it to happen to you, um, I'm unfortunately a part of a club that I know exactly what it feels like because that guy was just a guy walking past me on the sidewalk. And the minute he got out of my eye line, just beside me, he turned around, snatched me, pinned my arm, and told me he was going to kill me right then, like just like that, and then punched me in the face. There was nothing about the experience that made me think that it wasn't true, and it was terrifying. Uh, you also describe uh, during all this that he referenced a name. He kept shouting a name, and then you he kept said. Shouting kept yelling at me, um, my name is William and I'm going to kill you, don't forget that name. So don't forget my name, William, William, William. I work with the homeless and I've often advocated for everyone to ask people, not only to give them socks, but ask homeless people what their name is because people don't care what homeless people's names are. And a lot of times, you know, that is a very big deal. That. You know, and, and I say to people, here's something free. When you walk past homeless people, say, hey, my name's Sam, what's your name? And they tell you their name, and you can just keep going, it's free. This guy, because it's a very dehumanizing being in that situation, this guy kept yelling, my name is William, remember that, and then he said, I'm gonna kill you. But I didn't say anything, I was praying to God, like I, and I'm a pray person, like I've never prayed before. And the only thing I said or did, because he was too crazy for me to, if I had screamed, he probably would have done something more. 
we were in the middle. There was traffic everywhere, but I don't think I don't know if anyone saw me. Maybe they did. Call in if you did. But I it was 5 p.m. on Odin and Kawanga. So if you saw that, please tell the police. And I just said to him when he was trying to kill me, I said, you know what, William is a beautiful name, and I want you to know that I have a little nephew, and his name is William also. And then he tried to punch me again in the face, and he stopped. And then he said, get the F out of here. And believe me, I did. <laughs> right, right then. And I walked very slowly away from him to not, to not cause any kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, I think that was God and something. The connection, I, I think just maybe speaking his name saved my life. Polly, we are so, so glad to be able to speak to you this morning, and uh, what an experience. Uh, thanks for joining us and reassuring people that you're okay. Uh, I, I think there's obviously uh, a period of recovery, but, but you made some so really... So brave of her so, to come yeah, out and yeah. be so open about it, because we're all learning from, from, from her. You know, from her you know so what? I, I, that happened to me, but I think that what we, the bigger picture here is that we need mental health care for the homeless. We need that. We need it. Polly, thank Polly, you our so thoughts much. are with you this morning. Thanks so much. Thank you, Polly. Right, I love there. you guys. I thank love you. you guys. Thanks, Polly. We love you.